China celebrates its New Year, also known as Spring Festival. 2019 is the Year of the Pig. Happy New Year to all our friends, colleagues and viewers around the world. I'm Arnand Naidu and this is The Heat. Hundreds of millions of Chinese watch the annual Spring Festival Gala on television to kick off the Year of the Pig. People all across the country have made their way home to be part of this important family celebration. And Chinese people all over the world are taking part in the festivities too. On Sunday, Chinese President Xi Jinping extended Spring Festival greetings at the Great Hall of the People in Beijing. Today, we gather here to talk about friendships and national affairs. On behalf of the CPC Central Committee and the State Council, I am sending out greetings to Chinese people of all ethnic groups, our compatriots in Hong Kong, Macau and Taiwan, and overseas Chinese. I wish you all a happy new year. Joining me now is Sean Ding. He is the co-founder and CEO of G-Risk, a global risk analysis firm. Joining us too from Copenhagen is Julie Ouyang, born and raised in China. She is an artist entrepreneur now living in Europe. And she's the author of The Little Yellow Book. Also with us in the studio is Fan Young. She is Associate Professor of Communication and Media Studies at the University of Maryland. And joining us too from Nashville is Bill Ivey. He is a visiting professor at Indiana University. And he's the author of Rebuilding an Enlightened World. Welcome to all of you to the show. Sean Ding, let me start with you in the studio. Today, of course, a uh, hugely important day on the Chinese calendar, the yes. Chinese New Year. Put this into perspective for us. How significant is this day for Chinese families, and how does it really define Chinese culture and Chinese values? Well, I think, obviously, the Chinese New Year uh, speaks to the traditions that's been lasting for thousands of years uh, within the Chinese culture. People get together, people go back to their families. I think, you know, each year, about uh, close to 3 billion people would get on the road and just to, you know, uh, travel back and forth between uh, their hometown cities and uh, the places they work. So I think that speaks volumes to how important this is in terms of, you know, the family traditions, the values of uh, good fortune, of good wealth, and uh, of, uh, you know, fam the importance of family. Uh Fan Young, as uh, Sean points out, the Spring Festival also heralds one of the biggest migrations of people, if not the biggest migration of people in the world. Millions of people heading home to spend time with their families over the last few days. Um, what does the Spring Festival mean for you and your family? Well, for me, the festival is very much about togetherness. Usually I plan some events around food and um, we'll reach out to friends in the area to get together and also we invite some friends and some neighbors over for food. So um, I think it's really nice to experience that sense of togetherness in this time of the year. So, yeah. Okay, well, of course, it can be a bit lonely for some Chinese who are living overseas and away from their families. Let's watch part of a news story from a CGTN correspondent who spent some time with Chinese students who are living in the U.S. state of Illinois. Let's watch. Founded in 1867, the University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign boasts an impressive international student population. More than 5,000 students here are from China, making the Chinese New Year a significant event. Although Si Han Meng has studied in the U.S. for a few years now, the spring festival period is an important time to connect with family at home, as well as fellow Chinese students here. We will spend the spring festival party with most people that we don't know. We just gather on that date and treat each other, try to treat each other like families. Maybe we're complete strangers before that party, but after that we kind of treat each other like families and try to help each other when needed. That will no doubt be a relief for Zhou Huang, who is in her first year of studies. She hopes that sense of community will help her through any pangs of homesickness. I just came to America, and this is my first year that I'm not at home to, um, to in celebrate the Spring Festival. Um, I don't have family members companion with me, but I have lots of friends. So when you come to a, um, a strange country, well, you don't have family members, so 
all the friends that you get to know are like your new family members. The Spring Festival allows the Chinese students here the chance to celebrate their culture, but it also brings other opportunities, not least the sharing of that culture with other nationalities. For students at this university, the Chinese New Year is more than just a celebration. It's about finding cultural connections, no matter how far from home. Dan Williams, CGTN, Champaign, Illinois. So there we heard there from some students who are spending this important day, the Spring Festival, away from their homes in China. Uh, Julio Young, what is it like for you living overseas at this time of year? I mean, would you have preferred it to be in China at this time? Well, not really. I think I'm pretty used to uh, this, you know, kind of a loneliness. But I try always try to make it a little bit... Uh, Mm, when I feel homesick, I gather my friends and make dumplings. So that's what we would do in China. Uh, I wouldn't, I can't, to be honest, I can't imagine how I would uh, celebrate Chinese New Year in China because it's so crowded now. But still, it's a great, great festival. I love it. So, Julia, when you say it's so crowded in China, what's it like in uh, Copenhagen, where you are right now? Is it this, are these your Danish friends or Chinese friends who get, you get together with? Uh, there are not a lot of Chinese friends here, but in Amsterdam, I, I live uh, uh, between Amsterdam and Copenhagen. In Amsterdam, you've got a lot of Chinese uh, students, uh, friends, and we uh, great Chinese restaurants, uh, great conversation, great stories. That's a time to share these great moments with your uh, close ones, loved ones. Well, okay, let's take a look at uh, how this event is being celebrated around the world. Chinese New Year celebrations are growing across the globe. And Australia, down under, is just one of the many countries marking the occasion with events. Let's listen to the Lord Mayor of Sydney. The Chinese New Year Festival was born 22 years ago. It was a small annual village event in Chinatown. And it has now grown to the largest Lunar New Year celebration outside Asia, with over last year 1.3 million people participating and uh, an international media audience of 2 billion. All right, let's bring in Bill Ivey. He's a national. Bill, uh, cities like San Francisco, New York, they also have... Uh, big events to commemorate this event. But do you see this uh, Chinese New Year, the Spring Festival, as it's known, becoming uh, more global right now? It's certainly becoming more widespread here in the U.S. And I think it's primarily because since the 1980s, the population of Chinese in the U.S. has expanded so greatly. We now have you know, 3.2 million uh, Chinese living here in the U.S. We have 350,000 uh, students studying in the U.S. And what it means that celebrations that were concentrated in Chinatown neighborhoods in San Francisco or New York have now found a path out into the U.S. And certainly there are a half dozen special celebrations of different kinds uh, here, in, here in Nashville, in the middle of the U.S. All right, Sean Ding, 2019, of course, is the year of the pig. Uh, every year has its own animal zodiac yes. uh, sign, and it takes place over a 12-year rotation. Uh, tell us about the Year of the Pig. What's the significance of that? So Year of the Pig, um, it usually signifies a good harvest. It signifies, um, you know, uh, wealth and abundance. And uh, for people born in the Year of the Pig, you know, for this year, they're, they're supposed to be particularly lucky, and they need to be, uh, you know, celebrating their uh, birth, basically birth year. Uh, so this is uh, a highly, uh, you know, significant year in the Chinese zodiac sign. So when you look at these different years with these animal zodiac signs, how would they differ in how they're being celebrated? Well, they're celebrated, you know, with uh, joy and with tradition pretty much equally. So there is no uh, huge difference between these different zodiac signs. But I think the year of the pig in particular, because, uh, you know, Chinese people are really, really into, uh, you know, pork and into pig. So this is really something close to their heart. Right. This is close to, you know, the... Uh, lives in rural areas because they, you know, basically every household would, you know, see, uh, you know, pigs roaming around in the villages. So this is very close to their heart. So I think Year of the Pig, Year of the pig is particularly uh, worth celebrating in China. Fan Young, talking about pigs and pork, uh, there's also a lot of tradition surrounding food at this time. 
and the festival. Um, tell us a little about that. You mean you were telling us earlier on that you make dumplings, share it with your friends, etc. But um, how does food fit, fit into this? Well, um, I just remember doing a lot of hapa, hot uh, guo, around this time of the year because it's usually kind of cold. Uh, but also dim sum, or um, what Cantonese would call dim sum, uh, morning tea. And that's also uh, usually lots of varieties of different little dishes, mm -hmm. kind of like the Spanish tapas. Right. So those things are what I usually invite my friends to do uh, around this time. Now, fish also plays a big part definitely, of it. Definitely, definitely. Why fish? Well, um, the pronunciation for yu or fish in Chinese is the same as uh, abundance or surplus. So that's uh, one of the reasons that fish is kind of a must-have during this time, just to symbolize um, abundance and, um, and wealth. So, yeah. so when you talk about you know, people coming around to share food with you, uh, to share meals, etc., does this take place just on one day or over a period of time? It really depends. Um, over the weekend, for example, I, I already went to a friend's place uh, to start the celebration, and uh, I'm actually inviting more friends and family um, coming over uh, to my, fam my home uh, to continue the celebration. So it does last longer than just one day. Which is the way any celebration should last. Uh, let's go to Julia Young. She's in Copenhagen. And Julia, one of the big traditions, one of recent traditions, I would say, uh, over this event, the Chinese New Year, is this huge gala that is broadcast uh, from China. It's watched by hundreds of millions pe of people. Uh, why has that become so popular with families? And um, especially with Ch even Chinese families overseas are watching it. Ah, uh, the gala, uh, Chinese uh, New Year's uh, gala, gala. I think it's a very important show in the world, uh, certainly because China is becoming incre increasingly more important in the world. And the show gives uh, the latest trend, the lifestyle, and also the policies uh, shown th through the uh, programming. And I think for Chinese people, it's a way, it's a way of uh, great entertainment during this uh, important season of the year. And um, for the people around the world, not only the Chinese, I think it's a, a great way to catch a glimpse uh, of China, what's going on over there. I think it's a very accurate uh, way to get information as well as uh, entertainment. Fan Yang, you of course also grew up uh, watching the Spring Festival Gala. It's, and as a scholar of China and of globalization, um, what did you learn about China's growth and its transformation? Of course. Well, um, I just remember growing up in the 80s in China, always watching the Spring Festival Gala on CCTV with family and friends. And um, over time, you can kind of see what kind of new development uh, economically and culturally were taking place. And for now, I'm living abroad as someone who is originally from China. It's a really great lens for me to look at um, what new things are being picked um, to be included in the program, in addition to some of the standard um, performances. So um, uh, simultaneously, the sense of continuity uh, between past and present and also kind of signaling uh, the future in some ways. So, right. it's really so nice. this, uh, this gala, which is on television, this would be a very carefully thought out mm -hmm. show uh, from beginning to end to reflect the times. That's, that, would, uh, that would be the way I would put it. Yeah, yeah OK. Bill Ivey, um, you know, as more people learn about China, as more people learn about Chinese traditions and Chinese values, and you look at a big event like uh, this, the scale that we're talking about that is broadcast from China, how does it, uh, or to what extent does it go towards helping us explain China, towards our understanding of the country? Well, China has become a great object of curiosity for Americans, uh, particularly over the last uh, decade or 20 years. And, uh, and I think that uh, there is cultural interest as well as economic interest and political interest. And so uh, all of the festival activities, not only what we can see on television, but also the compressed events that happen in towns all over the U.S. is a great way of getting a glimpse, not a real thorough examination, but a real important glimpse of, of what what our other guests, what Sean and Fong and Julie have already talked about, ancient tradition, customs passed from family from one generation to another, festivals that gather people together for uh, important celebrations and spiritual communication. And, and I think that it's, it's a look at uh, a, a window into a society that's fascinating 
uh, and important and quite different than, uh, than the U.S. And Bill, you mentioned these events that take place in towns and cities across the United States. Where are the biggest ones held? Well, the biggest, of course, are still centered around uh, those areas where uh, big Chinese populations live. And those that would be New York City. It would be both Northern and Southern California, San Francisco and Los Angeles. Those are the big ones. And those are the ones we get to look at uh, kind of uh, from the outside through media. And then there are smaller ones scattered all over. And I think it's very based on where Chinese people live in the U.S. and also where uh, students who are studying in the U.S. live. I mean, we have more than 3,000 Chinese students at Indiana University in Bloomington. So there are little pockets uh, throughout the U.S., but it's the big cities that have long histories with, uh, with, the, uh, with Chinese residents that are, are the real centers. Actually, Fanyang, do you have a lot of Chinese students at your university? Mm, quite a few, actually, yeah, um, uh, and increasing. And do you see them getting together for this event? Uh, I believe so, yeah. Um, and also, uh, we also have a pretty large number of faculty uh, oh. from China or Asia, and so um, usually there will be some events as well. The Great. Asian Studies program, for example, will hold a celebration. Yeah. Okay, it is time for us to take a quick break, and as we do so, uh, I want to play you part of a short clip put together by our digital team that helps our global audience understand some of the traditions associated with Chinese New Year celebrations. We will be back right after this. New Year's Day sets the tone for the rest of the year, so for 15 days there are traditions and celebrations to follow, starting with paying respects to ancestors, visit the family tomb to clean it, and give offerings like wine and food. Drop in on a neighbor or visit with friends and family that are local. Then spread your love by traveling to visit friends and family that are farther away. Don't forget red envelopes to express your New Year wishes. Get ready for Kuo Wu by cooking a big dinner and waiting for midnight when fireworks tell everyone Kuo Wu is here. 